Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we'll discuss one interesting problem on graph data structure. Okay, so the problem statement is you'll be given a matrix. Let's say this is a matrix, and the dimension of matrix can be anything. It can be n cross m, right? Here it is actually three cross four, but in general, it can be n cross m, where n is the number of rows and m is the number of columns in that matrix. And one more thing, the matrix is filled with only ones and zeros, right? Where zero is representing that there is a blockage, zero is representing that there is a blockage, and one is representing that there is no blockage. Okay, so we'll discuss what exactly blockage and no blockage means in detail. So what you need to do, you need to start your journey from here. That is from this element. The coordinate of this element is zero zero, and end your journey at this point, which is n minus one comma m minus one. This is the coordinate of this element. Okay, and in between these two points, you need to count the number of possible paths from this point to this point. Okay, so let me draw one path here. And one more thing is that uh, you can either move to the right or to the bottom. Okay, let's say if you are at this element, then you have only two possible directions. That is from here to here, and from here to here. Okay. You cannot move uh, diagonally. This path is not possible. So this is uh, the directions. Okay. So let me draw the path here. Just a second. So this is one path. Okay. Now zero is representing that blockage. Means if we are at this point, then you cannot move to this point or to this point as well. Okay. You cannot move beyond zero because it's a blockage. And one is representing that there is no blockage. Means let's say if you are at this one, okay, if you are at this one, then you are free to move from this one to this one, or from this one to this one, right? So that is the concept of one and zero. Now let me draw the another path. So this is the second path from here, and this is the second path, okay? So the first path is this one, and the second path is this. So the answer for this matrix is two. You need to return two because there are two possible paths from starting point, which is zero zero, to the ending point, which is n minus one comma m minus one. Okay. So this is what exactly the problem statement. Now, uh, what we'll do, we'll try to solve this problem with the help of BFS traversal. Okay. And we already know that for BFS, we make use of one more data structure, which is Q. So we're using this Q for solving our problem. Okay. Now let me show you the pseudo code for it. Okay. So the first thing that we're doing here is we are just pushing the coordinate of first element of the matrix inside the Q. And this is the coordinate, which is zero zero. And after that, we are executing these set of commands inside this while loop, right? So at line number eight, we are just popping out uh, the front element from the queue and storing that element inside some temporary variable because we'll be using that element at line number ten. Okay. So after popping out uh, that element from the queue, uh, we just need to check whether the coordinate of that element is equal to n minus one comma m minus one because if it is equal to this element, so we just need to increment the count variable. Okay. This is the counter variable. So we'll increment this counter variable by one, right? Now, at line number twelve and thirteen, uh, we are just pushing the right element and the bottom element. Let's say if we are at this point, so we will push this element because uh, we can only move to this direction and this direction. So we just need to push this element and this element inside the queue. Okay. But there is one condition. The condition is that element should be available and it is not equal to zero. Let's say if we are at this position, okay. So for this element, the right element is available, but the bottom element is not available. So we just need to check this condition whether the element is available or not. And one more thing, there is no use of pushing uh, the coordinate of zero because we're not going to use zero because uh, it is not possible for us to move beyond zero. We cannot move from here to here, or from here to here. Okay, that's why we are not pushing the coordinate of zero. So this is what we are doing here at line number twelve and thirteen. Okay, now let's execute these set of commands on this matrix. Okay, 
So what we'll do, the first step here is to push the coordinate of first element of the matrix, which is 0, 0, right? So here the first element is this one. So we'll push the coordinate of this element, which is 0, 0. And then we are now inside this while loop. After that, we just need to pop out the front element from the cube, which is 0, 0. So we'll pop that element from the cube and store that element inside some temporary variable, which is temp, right? And one more thing, uh, here we have uh, n, this is n, and this is m, n rows and m columns, okay? So the value of n is 3, the value of n is 3, and the value of m is 2, okay? It is 2. Now n minus 1 becomes 2, sorry, the value of m is 4, and n minus 1 becomes 2, and m minus 1 becomes 3, okay? This is the value of n minus 1 comma m minus 1 and it is the coordinate of this element, right? So we'll check at line number 10. We are just checking that whether the coordinate equal to n minus 1 comma m minus 1 or not. So here 0 0 is not equal to 2 comma 3. Okay, so we'll just move forward at line number 12. We are just pushing the right element if it is not equal to 0 and at line number 13 we are pushing the bottom element. Okay. So since the right element is 0, we're not going to push this element and we'll check now the bottom element. Okay, so now bottom element is not 0. So we'll push the coordinate of this element inside this queue, which is 1, 0. Okay, we'll push 1, 0 inside this queue. Now we are again back at the starting point of this while loop. So we just need to pop out the front element from the queue, which is 1, 0. And then we'll check this coordinate with this one, 2, comma 3, which is not equal. So we'll push the right element of this uh, of 1 0 okay so the right element is this and the bottom element is this so we'll push the coordinate 1 comma 1 which is this one and this is 2 comma 0 okay we'll push 1 1 and 2 0 right now we are again back at the starting point of while loop then we'll pop out the front element from the queue which is this one we'll check whether this coordinate equal to this or not so it is not equal then we'll push the right and bottom element so for 1 1 the right element is this which is 1 comma 2 okay and the bottom element is this which is 2 comma 1 okay this is 2 comma 1 so but this is 0 this element is 0 so we're not going to push this coordinate right we'll push only 1 comma 2 inside this queue now we are again back at starting point of while loop then we need to pop out the front element which is 2 comma 0 uh, and after that we just need to verify that whether this coordinate equal to this or not so it is not equal right then uh, we'll push the right and bottom element for 2 comma 0 so 2 comma 0 is here the right element is 0 so we are not going to push that coordinate and there is no bottom element okay uh, there is no bottom element for 2 comma 0 so nothing to do at this step so what we'll do uh, we'll move uh, forward like we are now at starting point of while loop and we just need to pop out the front element which is 1 comma 2 okay so for 1 comma 2 this 1 comma 2 is not equal to 2 comma 3 so this condition is not satisfied right so we just need to push the front the right element and the bottom element of 1 comma 2 so 1 comma 2 is here the right element is this and the bottom element is this right so it is 1 comma 3 1 comma 3 and the coordinate of bottom element is this is 2 comma 2 right this is 2 comma 2 now we are again back at starting point of while loop so we just need to pop out the front element which is 1 comma 3 and 1 comma 3 is not equal to 2 comma 3 so we'll just pop out from this queue and then we'll push the right and bottom element of 1 comma 3 so 1 comma 3 is here okay so the right element of there is no right element for 1 comma 3 okay but there is bottom element for 1 comma 3 so we'll push this coordinate which is 2 comma 3 we'll push 2 comma 3 inside this queue okay now we are again back at starting point of while loop okay we just need to pop out the front element which is 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 2 is not equal to 2 comma 3 right so 2 comma 2 is here we then uh, push 
the right and bottom element of 2 comma 2 so for 2 comma 2 the right element the coordinate of right element is 2 comma 3 so we'll push 2 comma 3 here and there is no bottom element for 2 comma 2 so we'll do nothing right now we are again back at starting point of while loop okay we are again here then we just need to pop out the front element from the queue so the front element is 2 comma 3 and now 2 comma 3 equal to 2 comma 3 means this step is verified means it is returning true okay so we just increment the count variable so count variable becomes one now okay so it is one and we then push the right and bottom element of two comma three so there is no right element there is no right element and there is no bottom element also okay so we are again back at starting point of while loop okay and then we'll pop out the front element which is two comma three right and then we again verify two comma three equal to two comma three or not so it is equal so we'll increment the counter variable by one which becomes two count becomes two okay and then we'll push the right and bottom element so right and bottom element are not available okay so these elements are not available so we'll do nothing and now the queue becomes empty there is no element inside this queue so the condition which is written here becomes false so we are again uh, back outside of this while loop and the program got ended okay so what we, we need to do we need to just return the value of count variable to the main function so the answer is 2 right the answer is 2 so this is uh, the steps that we need to follow now let's see the code for it okay so this is the code so here uh, instead of using n comma m i have written r comma c which is rows and columns right and here i have created this function which is count paths and i'm passing this matrix as a parameter here okay so you just need to create a queue which is a pair type right and here we are pushing the coordinate of the first element and executing these commands inside this while loop right so the first thing that we need to do is we need to pop out the front element from the queue and store that element in some temporary variable so at line number 15 we are doing this and at line number 16 we are just popping out the front element from the queue okay and this uh, at line number 18 we are checking the coordinate of that element so if it is equal to r minus 1 and c minus 1 so we are incrementing the count variable here and at line number 20 and 21 we just need to push uh, the right and bottom element inside the queue okay so we are checking here that if the right element is available means if the coordinate of right element is available so and it is not equal to zero means it should be one okay so there are two conditions here the first one it should be available and it should not equal to zero right so if these two conditions are satisfied we just need to push that that coordinate inside the queue right so this is what we are doing here and at the end we are just returning the count variable to the main function okay so this is the code now let's run this code for this matrix okay so it is compiled successfully now if I run this okay so the answer is 2 means for this matrix the answer is 2 so we have our two path that is this is the first path and this is the second one okay